Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a corporate presentation slide. And this tutorial is inspired by one of my plugins called Animation Studio, and in this pack there's over 1500 pre-made motion graphic scenes and presets, meaning that I can drag in a template and I can swap out the text and I'm able to save a ton of time with these detailed compositions. The author of this plugin, NitroZeme, is giving away a free $100 gift card for the next three months in the months of June, July, and August. All you have to do is make, purchase one of these packs and all you have to do is click to win. And Video Library has over 1,500 scenes which I'll be showing to you. They've just updated this which is really exciting. But let's go ahead and jump in this video and let me show you how to create an awesome corporate presentation like this. Here we are in a clean composition and you always want to bring in like your image, a placeholder, a video. So I have my, you know, image here and I'm just going to scale this in here to make it look good. And boom, there's my image. And the first thing I want to do is I probably want to work with the titles. So what I'll do is grab, grab our textile tool and I'll type out my text and we'll just call it corporate. All right. And here I'm going to go to my character window and I'm using the typeface Gotham. I want to make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to go to the line tab and center this up. If you don't see the line tab, go up to window align and I'm going to come here to our background, hit T on keyboard for opacity and just lower this down just for the time being and boom, our title is standing out just fine. And what I want to do here is grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to click on the word fill, set this to none, click OK, click on the word stroke, set it to solid color, click OK and I'm going to draw out a box like this around our title and I'm going to go ahead and center this up and you know we can change the width of the stroke if you want to so maybe I'll set this down to seven so it gets a little bit more you know thin and you know we rename this layer to box and we want to animate this box so what we can do is open up the box go to add and we'll add a trim paths we'll open up trim paths one we'll add a keyframe or we'll actually set the start percentage to 100% we'll add a keyframe for start we'll move forward by a second and set this to zero percent and now we have this box that gets animated around our title and we can add a keyframe for offset and go to the one second mark and we can offset this by a touch so now it'll be animating around and that's pretty interesting we might want to go in the other direction there we are so that looks cool and we probably want to do a nice transition for our text so we can open up our text layer and we'll go to the beginning here we'll go to animate and we can do an opacity and we'll just keep it at opacity. We can set the opacity to 0%. We'll come here to the range selector. We'll add a keyframe for the start. And we'll move forward to a second again. We'll set this to 100%. And now we'll have a nice fade for our title like this. And, you know, that looks pretty cool. And we have it very simple and clean. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this is like the opening slide. And, you know, you're going to be able to apply, you know, text techniques and box techniques for any other information you want to display on other slides. So I want to make sure that we have a nice design overall with this, uh, you know, presentation. So what we can do here is maybe create a nice background. So let's go to, to layer new solid and we'll call it BG. Click OK. Go to effect generate gradient ramp. And we'll come here. We'll select two nice colors. So maybe I'll do like a nice light purple and then also perhaps like a darker purple, maybe we'll do more in the magentas. And I'll probably actually make this purple a little bit more, you know, blue, I like that, that's nice. And we can come here to the start ramp and we can move this over to the you know, left side, go to the end of ramp, move this over to the right side. And I think that looks pretty good. We can put this on top of our background. And what I wanna do is toggle switch to the modes until we see the blend modes and set this to overlay. So now we have a more of a color themed presentation and branding is about everything. So make sure you, you know, you use the branding colors when you're working with this sort of thing. Of course, in the animation studio, there's a lot of great examples of what we can do here, but I want to work something with more uh, shapes. So we have this one right here in the right corner. If you can see it on YouTube, uh, we, these shapes reveal on as we open up and say a new slide. And that's what I want to do with the shapes. So, what we can do is come here to the top, grab, say, the polygon tool, which is those, those are the shapes, click on the word fill, set it to solid color, click on the word stroke, and we'll set it to none. I'll set the fill just to, you know, medium gray. It doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do here is draw out a, you know, a polygon like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. It's totally fine. And this is where I'll have it come in. So I would like to animate this. So we open up Polystar 1, go to Transform Polystar 1. We'll add a keyframe for, say, position and rotation. 
And we'll move these key, two keyframes forward in time. We'll go here to maybe another second or so. And then I will rotate this and I will move this uh, layer up. So it'll come on just like this. Then I want it to duplicate the Polystar one and we'll bring up those keyframes just by hitting U on our keyboard. And we can come over here and reposition our polygon. And we can always, of course, rotate it. And we can just do it like that. And then I'll just have to reposition our polygon outside. When we zoom out here, you can see the box. And we can just position this outside of the uh, right side here, re-rotate it. And now you'll have something like that. And we'll just do one more duplication of this. And now we should have something like this. And we're going to bring the shape layer right above our background. And we're going to come here to our background, go to the track mat, and set this to alpha mat. We're we'll actually going to go to alpha inverted mat. And this way you have a little bit of shape compositing in here. And it can blend in your original image. And of course you can always add more shapes into this. But I think for this you know, time being, this is you know okay. It's fine what we're doing here. And the same concept applies for whatever we're trying to do. Of course we can you know scale up the shape layer if we want. It doesn't have to be this small and then we can just move it over. So maybe you have like the logo or you have just a little bit of branding identity in this. And that looks pretty cool. And of course we can always duplicate the shape layer or the background here and make sure we turn off the you know track mat for it. And we can just lower the opacity on this layer just so we can keep just some of that original color in there. And that looks pretty cool. So I added a subtitle and now that we have our core information on here, everything else is really in the more in the design and this is you know kind of plain. So let's go ahead and actually set this up for an animated presentation. So what we can do here is grab say the ellipse tool, we'll set the fill to white and we're going to come over here and we're going to just draw out a perfect cir circle, hold down shift on your keyboard and here's one circle. Now I want to come into here, go to add and I want to add a repeater. And I'm going to open repeater one and I'm going to set the number of copies to, you know, maybe five or to the number of slides that you have in your presentation. Uh, we'll go to, to the transform repeater one. We'll set the X position to zero. We'll increase the Y position. And now we have some, you know, bullet points. So this is like, hey, this is the net, how many slides there are. There's five important slides. I don't know. Maybe you want to just keep it at five. But we can come over here, move this over. And actually, I'll probably make this a little bit bigger. So go back to the original ellipse one. We'll come here to ellipse path and we can just increase the size. And we can always do some adjustments as we see fit. And what's cool about this is I can say add a keyframe for the start opacity. I can set this down to 0% and also the end opacity is 0%. And we'll move forward here to 2 seconds. And I'll set the start opacity to 100%. Then I'll add a keyframe for end opacity. And I'll move forward to about 3 seconds and set it to 100%. Then I'll move forward again to maybe about 4 seconds set it down to 0%. And I'm just going to kind of continue this flicker here across my timeline. So it'll just be kind of pulsating in there. And, you know, it's just really cool extra stylistic elements in here. And that's pretty cool. And what else I could probably do is draw like another ellipse here. And, you know, draw out another circle. Hold down uh, shift control on a PC to draw out from the center. Turn off the fill. Click on the stroke and set the stroke down maybe to like two. And this is like, hey, this is the active slide. So all I have to do from here is animate this. So maybe I'll just do a simple opacity on it. So I'll hit T on my keyboard for opacity, add a keyframe for that, move it forward in time, set it down to 0%. You know, there you have it. And I can maybe even change the color of this. So maybe I'll do like uh, purple. And perhaps maybe we want like an arrow to move on to the next slide. So we can maybe grab the textile tool. And we'll do like the, I think this is greater than in symbol. I always get these confused, greater than and less than. This is definitely the greater than symbol. We just type out the greater than symbol uh, or the less than, whatever you know, side you want to go to. But it makes sense to go from uh, left to right. And we can have a nice arrow in here. And, you know, we're just using a character. You could use the pen tool to create this. But, you know, if you can do it on a text, it makes a lot of sense. And maybe I'll actually go to the uh, color over here and I'll grab my purple or the brand color and we'll come over here we'll hit you know R and T on our keyboard for rotation and opacity and we'll move these key uh, we'll add a keyframe for both these properties we'll move forward a little bit in time we will rotate this and actually what we need to make sure we do is double click the pan behind tool 
here. So the anchor point is right in the middle of this layer, and then we can rotate it. And I'll set the opacity down to zero percent. Make both, make all these key, select all the keyframes, and make them easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And boom, there we are set up for success to continue to animate the slide. So you remember those shapes that we did right here, uh, that almost looks like a star. What we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this a little bit. So we hit P on our keyboard for that layer. We'll move forward here in time. We'll add a keyframe for position. We'll move forward to our entire composition, and I will actually animate this a little bit so there's a little bit more movement in here and you know that looks pretty cool and of course you might want to create a little bit of a parallax with the background here so what I would do is I would probably pre-compose the background by going up to layer pre-compose and we can call it background and click OK and what we'll do is we'll hit Astro and keyboard for scale we'll move forward in time to the end of our animation which I'll say five seconds and I'll scale it backwards Go to the first keyframe and I'll scale this upwards by a touch. And it just adds a little bit of a nice scaling animation in there. So this is basically ready to go. The only thing I have to do is animate my text, but however, you might be animating a lot of text when you're doing this type of work. So I actually have in this animation studio text library, which is also available. I'll link it in the video description. I also did a review on all these plugins, by the way. And there's over, I think, about 700, 800 presets in here for text. So I can find something that makes sense for what I want to do. So perhaps something with, you know, blocks looks good. Um, I could look at the pre, I could preview it over here. Maybe I like that. I'm going to go ahead and apply this as a preset with the layer selected. And within a couple of seconds, I now have this entire preset with my subtitle. I can just move this layer over in time if I want to. And now we have this entire animation and ready to go. Now, of course, be sure to turn on motion blur and we'll render it out. And, you know, this is a really nice scene. Now, of course, if with uh, Animation Studio with the uh, video library pack, you know, there's over like 1500 elements and scenes. So, you know, we can create nice Instagram stories if you want to do that. Cause I did a tutorial, you know, not too long ago. And when we find something that we really like, so perhaps I like this, all I have to do is click apply and it automatically adds this to our scene. Of course, you can open this up. You can always change out the titles. And within a couple of seconds, I can add another scene in here. You know, I really think it's important to know how to do this sort of work. Uh, but when you're working on big projects, you know, anytime you can save, you know, a little bit of time, it goes a long way for helping you produce even better work or helping you focus on another project or your business. So that's why, you know, I highly like Animation Studio. It's helped me save a lot of time. And, you know, I'm just happy to share this. So go ahead and check it out if you're really interested in Animation Studio. After a quick render, here is our full rendered uh, presentation. It's set up and ready for success. And what's nice is you can duplicate this in After Effects. And all you have to do is maybe change out the main title, put your new information in there, and also, or, and also maybe redesign some of the elements in here. So you're really set up for success. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are able to take away some cool concepts away from this tutorial. So thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like on it because it helps me out tremendously. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more After Effects videos. Hit us up on our social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always be creating.